Martin, multiple universes, the multiverse, is such an important part of science's self-conception of the world. I'd like to explore its history. So let's start. Do you recall your first serious thinking about the possibility of multiple universes? Mm -hmm. I think I and a few other people came to the concept in a rather oblique way, uh, certainly back in the 1970s, along with uh, colleagues like Bernard Carr and Brandon Carter here in Cambridge. We were interested in the idea that you could understand most of physical phenomena, the scales of stars and atoms, etc., in terms of a few physical parameters, a few basic numbers. And it's rather nice and I think very illuminating to try and understand how the scales of stars, planets, and people can be understood in terms of a few simple numbers, the basic numbers of atomic physics and gravity. And that's instructive in its own way. But of course, it then leads you to uh, ask in a sort of counterfactual way, what would a universe be like if some of these numbers were different? And this is just a sort of exercise in counterfactual history, as it were. Historians do this, for mm. instance. They speculate what would have happened if the Brits had behaved better in 1776 <laughs> and uh, the US was still a colony, etc. <laughs> and in the same spirit, we can ask what would the cosmos be like if the laws and concepts of nature were different. And certainly back in the 1970s, um, we speculated about this, and I wrote a paper with Bernard Carr in 1979 uh, trying to emphasize how we could understand many of the key features of our universe in terms of a few numbers. I don't think at that stage we had any particular view as to whether these uh, counterfactual universes might be a consequence of a real physical theory, but the development of... Um, the idea of inflation and the realization that our universe might go far beyond the observational horizon did lead one to speculate that may actually be places. And where, that occurred just a couple, literally a couple of years later, that began to uh, uh, come into fore. The uh, inflationary idea was developed yes. in the 1980s, yes. and that uh, led to the possibility that there could be uh, domains. Um, and at the same time, uh, the realization came about that perhaps different Big Bangs might, as it were, cool down differently. There was the idea that the laws of low energy physics in the world we inhabit uh, may be the outcome of so-called phase transitions as the universe cooled down, and these may have happened differently in different universes. And this leads to the idea that uh, what we call universal laws might be, as it were, environmental accidents hmm. in our cosmic patch and not the deepest level of universal laws. So I think the idea that there might be other Big Bangs became discussed widely after the development of inflation, and there have since then been other ideas involving uh, separate space times. How have your colleagues in physics, in astrophysics, uh, accepted these ideas over time. I know mm -hmm. there have been a number of different conferences that you've mm -hmm. uh, that yes. you've uh, hosted and pioneered. H mm -hmm. How have you seen this yes. development? Mm -hmm. I think there are two reasons why these ideas are taken more seriously now. The first is that uh, uh, the inflationary theory, although not completely battle tested, has survived some observational tests, particularly when we've studied the details of the microwave background. Secondly. Uh, string theory, although again not battle tested, does suggest that perhaps the laws of physics as we know them may be, as it were, environmental accidents and there could in principle be forms of space that allow physics to be different. So those two strands have led people to believe that uh, these counterfactual universes may in some sense exist and has been a trend certainly over the last decade. Ten years ago, um, I hosted a conference actually in the, the barn of my farmhouse just outside Cambridge where we discussed this and uh, we had about uh, 30 people who came mm. to discuss uh, the idea that there could be other universes and our universe might be rather special because the laws might be specially attuned to allow complexity to observe. And four or five years later, I held another meeting 
and that meeting was held uh, uh, here in this room where we're speaking mm. um, under the portrait of Newton. <laughs> and uh, uh, I remember uh, Frank Wilczek, who attended both meetings, saying at the second meeting that there'd been a transformation in attitude. He said at the first meeting uh, they felt that they were a beleaguered uh, group sort of exiled to the edge of the university. <laughs> and now we had a group in the center of the university uh, talking about what was now a more established uh, view. What Still, year was that? Sorry? What year was that? Uh, this must have been about 2005 when we had our, our second meeting mm. here. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, I think there was a uh, trend, particularly among the particle theorists, to take seriously the idea that uh, there are many vacua. And uh, people like Lenny Soskind have uh, uh, said this in a very emphatic way, that there could be huge numbers of uh, options. And uh, people like Soskind, Velenkin, uh, Guth, and uh, Linde have espoused this idea, but so also um, have many other particle physicists. And um, I remember also another uh, uh, meeting um, which I was involved in, where there was a panel discussion, uh, and I was on the panel, as was Andre Linde, and we were asked how seriously did we take the uh, multiverse concept. Mm -hmm. And I responded, uh, if we calibrate by would you bet your goldfish, would you bet your dog, or would you bet your child, mm -hmm. I was about to dog level. Mm -hmm. And then Andre Linde, who'd worked on this topic for 20 years, he said, well, I believe it much more than that. I'd almost bet my life on it. And in fact, at the meeting here, um, subsequent to that, Stephen Weinberg gave the concluding talk. And I remember him saying that, uh, uh, having quoted that episode, he would himself bet Martin Rees's dog and Andre Linde's life <laughs> on the idea that the uh, multiverse uh, might actually exist. Cotemporaneous with this, uh, particularly after um, uh, Brendan Carter and yourself developed these ideas, a, a different strand came up in terms of the fine-tuning argument in the so-called anthropic principle. Mm -hmm. How has that um, uh, fared during the same time? Mm -hmm. yes. Well, of course, the um, uh, discussion back in the 1970s of the um, fundamental constants and what would happen if they were different did show that if you imagined very different values for the constants, then the outcome would be a universe in which complexity couldn't develop so easily. For instance, if gravity was hugely stronger, there would not be so many powers of 10 between the micro world of atoms and the cosmic scale of stars. And therefore, nothing as big as us could exist without being squashed and also stars wouldn't last very long. So it was clear that you have to have a force of gravity, which is crucial, but the weaker it is, the better. Moreover, there had to be sort of balance between the forces in an atomic nucleus, between the uh, nuclear force that holds them together and the electromagnetic force that disrupts them. And people realized that if these forces were different, then we might have only hydrogen atoms or if other forces were different, we might have no atoms at all, just pure radiation. And so people realized that uh, uh, you couldn't just have a random set of laws that would lead to our universe. Mm. Uh, the degree of the fine tuning is controversial, but I think you can uh, think of many universes which would be sterile or stillborn, as it were, mm -hmm. in which no life could exist. Um, and. Uh, once the particle physicists came up with the idea that uh, um, different vacua might allow different laws of physics, this became relevant. We naturally find ourselves in uh, one of the subset of the spaces where complexity uh, can emerge. Um, this used to be called um, the anthropic principle. I think that's a rather pretentious name, <laughs> but I think uh, the preferred phrase should be anthropic reasoning. Uh, it's certainly legitimate to say that if we have a um, uh, theory uh, which produces domains governed by different laws, then obviously uh, we should expect to be in not necessarily a typical one of those spaces, but a typical one of the subset in which something as complicated as us could exist. And that may be a small subset. How big it is depends on the details of the theory, which we don't yet have. But I think anthropic reasoning has to be a part of any theory which admits the possibility that physical reality embraces regions governed by different physical laws from those that prevail in the region that we inhabit.